last Monday. Yeah. We learned about the reinforced concrete design, the elements. Mm. The elements. <coughs> elements. And then a little bit about the what consists in concrete reinforcement concrete sorry cement aggregate and then we learn about the concrete properties okay so today i'm going to go straight to the last kali slide kita guys ni i'm i'm sure of that so i pergi direct to <coughs> the next one which is reinforcement because dah habis dah pasal concrete eh Mm, so reinforcing bars are produced in two grades. So we have two types of reinforcement bar, which are <coughs> hot roll mild steel and hot roll or cold work. Oi, panjangnya high yield steel. Yang penting ini mild steel and high yield steel. Okay, what you need to know what is FY. FY is oh yeah. suka sangat dia hi hi apa FY is steel strength okay <coughs> so that, that is the symbol symbol um FY steel strength so bila I sebut FY you should know FY is steel strength for mild steel, FY dia 250. Okay. For... Apa aku nak cakap? Uh, okay. For high yield steel, maksudnya, you know mild steel is like mild and high yield steel is like the other types yang lebih kuat lah. Okay. The strength is 460. Okay. So, high yield steel 460, mild steel 250. Ini kena hafal. Okay. Kalau you tak tahu macam mana rupa mild steel, so mild steel look like this. Okay. Look like um, a very smooth surface bar. Okay. Sebab uh, surface dia ni smooth eh. Tak ada macam this one yang corrugated like that. Okay, this type is actually high yield steel. Okay, this one adalah high yield steel. <coughs> Alright. And then uh, also dekat bawah ni, okay, this is the type of high yield also. But it is square twisted coal work bar. Okay, but this one dah obsolete lah. Orang tak pakai pun macam ni. <coughs> <coughs> tak pakai pun this type jenis yang macam ni normally for high yield steel we going to use this type okay the one yang surface dia tak cantik macam ni ni okay this one alright the stress strain curve eh sorry I lupa tertinggal hot roll or cold work okay, so you nampak ada perkataan hot roll, hot roll and cold work okay this one adalah hot roll okay ini adalah hot roll Normal, you selalu nampak dekat side ke, kat gambar ke, lebih common eh. This one what we normally use. Okay, however for cold work, contohnya macam this type eh. Square twisted cold work bar. Sebab sebenarnya bar ni, dia bukan bulat eh. Sebenarnya dia square. Yang square twisted ni. Okay, ada this type and also dia ada juga jenis yang uh, round bar juga ada juga. Um, tapi... <coughs> uh, cold works ni kita jarang pakai because they expensive okay uh, normally bila and you know when we work with steel you akan kena panaskan dia you have to panas on certain degrees of um, temperature sampai dia melt and then baru you boleh bentuk dia kan okay and then bila dia sejuk baru you boleh pakai lah okay but for cold work after it's cold you not straight away use it. You can have another process for finishes. Okay, another process for finishes. Mungkin you nak kan finishes dia um, uh, smooth kan. Okay, kan kalau for example macam you twist dia macam ni. 
Okay, sebenarnya you bukan twist dia ni. <laughs> sebenarnya there is like another finisher set yang macam mungkin you sebenarnya ketuk-ketuk dia sampai dia jadi. Tapi masih dalam keadaan senjuk. Bukan yang masa panas. The way you shape dia bukan untuk jadi certain-certain bentuk tu bukan masa sejuk. That's like the finishes itself, how the end product going to happen, going to to go, going to happen, going to be manufacture end product dia tu before that dia akan after besi tu sejuk, dia have another process masa tengah sejuk tu dia shape that um The shape that uh, bar. Maksudnya the finishes itself. Dalam keadaan sejuk. Okay. Bukan masa tengah panas-panas. Dia tak sama macam hot roll eh. And harga dia lebih expensive sebab dia ada finishes. Okay. And we don't really use this cold work type ni. It's not common lah to be used eh. Alright. Fahamkah? Faham? Okay. Alright. And then... Um, Okay, here um, also you nampak ada stress strain curve for reinforcing bar. Okay, we have this graph. Graph ni I believe that mungkin you pernah nampak lah masa part 2. I ada pernah explain dalam chapter 2 about the stress strain and modulus of elasticity. Ingat lagi kah? Ha, Kayum? Ingat lagi kah? Tak ingat. Okay, so <clears throat> this type of, um, sorry, this graph um, reflect that one eh. Reflect that uh, hook law yang kita mungkin belajar dulu yang mungkin tak ingat lah. Just a theory. It's just that when you hang the rod of bar and then you put a, you put a load um, kat bottom dia, you letak beban kat bawah and then dia akan tertarik that bar. Lepas tu kita akan gauge lah. Kalau this much of loads, we will get this much of strain. This much of load, we will get this much of strain. Okay, so this is what uh, they plotted lah from the test. Okay, according to type of bar. For mild steel, you, uh, you, as you what you can see, it is 250. Okay, and high yield hot roll bar also 460. Okay, for high yield coal work bar, kalau you nampak, dia lebih tinggi. Okay, dia lebih expensive. However, dia tak boleh maintain macam, uh, the strength cannot ma tak maintain macam high yield hot roll bar. Okay, sebab dia tak, dia tak, dia tak go straight line. Okay, dia akan fail. Dia cepat fail tapi dia kuat. You can go higher on the on the on the strain side. However, um, dia tak boleh maintain the strength as much as the high yield hot roll bar. Ah, oh, susah tak aku cakap. Okay, alright. <coughs> Enough on that. So basis of design, um, we are referring to BS lapan satu satu kosong. So BS lapan satu satu kosong ni is actually a book. Uh, buku kitab engineer lah orang panggil kalau engineer dia mahu guna buku ni je ataupun mungkin euro code however euro code ni Malaysia we are not really um, tak menyeluruh lagi pakai euro code overseas kita banyak pakai lah Malaysia kita punya practice masih lagi pakai BS because uh, most of engineers dia rasa dia tak nak belajar benda baru <laughs> okay so we stick to BS lagi Uh, however, in BS, BS ni British standard eh, bukan bullshit. It is British standard. Okay. So, this British standard um, untuk reinforced concrete, nama dia 8110. Okay. Kalau untuk steel, ada lain. Okay. Untuk de design benda yang lain-lain adalah beberapa jenis BS eh. But for reinforcement concrete, <coughs> reinforced concrete, it is 8110. Oh. So the design is actually based on the limit state method. Um, so limit state method ni sebenarnya when you design anything ataupun bila you buat satu-satu benda pun sekalipun, in general eh, this is general talking, there must be a limit. Okay, kena ada limit. Kita takkan go beyond limit eh. Bila kita go beyond limit, um, apa nak cakap? Contohnya lah, kita go beyond limit. Um, okay, for example, kalau kita bina bangunan. 
kita go go beyond limit this is the limit kita go beyond limit um, bangunan tu akan collapse contohnya macam tu eh so bila kita design there, there must be a limitation okay throughout design life dia for example you bina bangunan for 50 years life so for 50 years life that bangunan tak boleh collapse mesti masih ada lah mesti uh, durable as as the design life lah maksudnya macam tu eh so that's why we need this limit state we don't want it to exceed um, the capacity that bangunan tu boleh support ah contohnya macam tu eh so first we have ULS which is the ultimate limit state so the whole structure or its element should not collapse overturn or buckle when subjected to design load so apa maksudnya ULS ni ultimate limit state so ultimate limit state ni means that bila you design you mesti tahu the limit state so that bangunan you takkan collapse lah okay so macam mana you nak tahu berapa limit state adalah calculation dia adalah numbers that you have to compare okay so dia bukan datang secara tiba-tiba lah there is in BS okay so kita pun tak nak dia overturn ataupun buckle okay and the second one is serviceability limit state okay the structure should not become unfit for use due to excessive deflection cracking or vibration okay kalau you compare ULS and LS SLS you see that ULS ni lebih critical maksudnya sebab kalau you tengok collapse okay overturn maksudnya bangunan tu terus runtuh bangunan tu terus berpusing berputar ataupun buckling Okay, we don't want, you know, buckling. Contohnya kalau uh, we are talking about column. So, kalau column tu buckle, column tu akan jadi menyengit macam ni. Adakah macam tu? Tapi teguk sangat ni. Okay, dia macam ngiuk. Dia macam herut. Ha, herut. Ha, macam tu lah column tu pergi. So, that is buckling. Bila buckling ni happen, possibility dia untuk collapse high very very high eh sebab compression force from top yang menyebabkan you punya bangunan tu jadi penyet macam tu lah okay um, so this is we don't want this happen so ULS lebih critical dari segi nak make sure that bangunan you selamat lah okay however serviceability ni um, is more on the appearance ataupun dari segi aesthetic value of you punya bangunan Memanglah orang cakap cracking, uh, alah cracking sikit je. Cracking sikit is okay but cracking kalau banyak tak tak adalah bahaya sangat pun. Okay bukanlah nak kata macam kalau setakat cracking kat dinding. No it's not that 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 um, critical. However it is um, not fit to be used sebab dari segi appearance wise ni pun kurang menarik and lama-lama cracking tu boleh makin besar makin besar makin besar lama-lama pun akan boleh pecah juga but it takes time lah it have to happen so as as uh, SLS ni lebih more on the appearance ataupun aesthetic value of the building itself lah okay ui penatnya aku bercakap <laughs> okay so some of the ULS to be considered are we have like bending shear direct compression tension overturning so uh, if you see here everything here is actually caused by forces okay forces uh, cause bending uh, stress causes uh, uh, forces cause bending shear okay sorry shear stress bending shear shear stress um, force also happen to menyebabkan direct compression and tension force macam tu and then overturning kalau you masih ingat masa part 2 you belajar pasal retaining wall retaining wall also you learn about overturning maksudnya the the structure like overturn berpusing kan so we don't want that to happen it also can happen pada building boleh eh kalau katakan the ground condition itself not good and the load is too much you tak provide enough footing for your building you punya building boleh ber condong <laughs> ber condong overturning dia macam ni eh, nak berpusing eh okay so some SLS to be considered are uh, we have like deflection cracking and 
vibration so this is more on the appearance wise lah. so this is what you are checking so when, when designing particular concrete element it is usual to first ensure that the ULS is not exceeded and then check the relevant SLS are also satisfied so it is very very important to check for ULS okay because ULS um ULS ni lebih penting lah kalau tak collapse lah okay Normally, when ULS are satisfied, SLS akan satisfied. Jangan risau. Okay. So, that's why kita penting check ULS. Because it is ultimate eh. Yang paling penting sekali. So, having identified the relevant limit states, the design process simply involve basing the design on the most critical one and then checking for remaining limit state. Okay. So, yang paling penting adalah check ULS and then baru check, check SLS. Okay. Yang paling penting lah. This requires an understanding of first is material properties and the second one is loading. So here you nampak ada tulis clause, clause, clause. This is not Santa Claus. This is clause daripada British standard. Okay. <coughs> Which is um, kitab lah. Okay. To, for engineer. So kalau you tengok dalam BS ni, you boleh tengok sendiri clause ni. If you are very, very interested and keen to know more about this stuff, you can check the BS. And I'm not BSU lah, okay? I'm serious talking lah, bukan BSing you eh. You know what is BS eh? Alright, and then we have like re reinforced concrete beam design. So tadi, I just treat up uh, in general about reinforced concrete. Okay, so right now, baru kita masuk into reinforced concrete beam design. Okay, so, okay, in this slide, we have like three types of beam. So the first one here, you see, it is already named rectangular section with tension steel. Bawah ni is actually tension steel. Okay. Apa ni? Kotak. Bukan. Ini cross section. Okay. You ada beam like this one. Ayo, panjangnya beam aku. Tak nak padam. You ada beam like this. Okay, beam ni macam ni kan. Panjang macam ni kan. Right, you cut it, cut it. So, dia akan adalah section macam ni. Dekat dalam. So, itulah rupa dia. Okay, you cut the beam, then this is what inside lah, the cross section. Dua ni tension steel. Kota ni concrete. Okay, alright. <coughs> so, for B, okay, B ni pula, bawah ni, tiga biji ni adalah, Tension steel. Atas itu biji compression steel. Oi, buruk itu sen. Okay, fahamlah kot. Compression. Okay. And the third one, C ni pula, is flange section of either T or L. So, dia panggil this one T. Ini L lah. L terbalik. Okay. With tension steel and with or without compression steel. So, kalau ada tension steel, dia duduk kat bawah. Sorry. Tension steel mesti ada. Okay. Bawah ni is tension steel. Atas ni can be, boleh ada atau boleh tak ada this compression steel. Okay. What you will learn. So, for the syllabus, we going to just cover this one. Okay. A simple tension steel without compression steel on top. So, kita tak belajar B and C. Kita belajar A sahaja. Okay. So, um, apa aku nak cerita? Hmm, tu je lah. Ada soalan setakat ni. Any question up until this hum? Ni slide nombor berapa? Tak tahu. Sampai slide ni. <laughs> ada soalan? Kalau ada soalan, can just uh, directly post kat dalam chat ke apa ke kalau you nak tanya lah. Kalau you tak nak tanya, tak payah tanya. Tak siapa paksa. <laughs> okay. <coughs> okay. Mm. So, bila masa you nak pakai macam ni, ini this uh, C1 is the one yang complicated one. Okay, kita takkan belajar. <laughs> ni complicated lah. This is the design yang perhaps uh, you have a load yang lebih besar and you want to build uh, on a certain certain like macam beam you nak kecilkan dia so ataupun mungkin dia berada dekat site yang 
different daripada because yang the one yang kita belajar ni this is like a simple beam eh macam you just design satu beam panjang macam tu je dia tak bersambung lagi <laughs> bila you buat like continuous beam ah uh, mungkin C ni keluar okay if you still remember indeterminate structure okay C ni mungkin keluar masa tu lah okay kalau A ni tak ada okay dia tak bersambung Okay, um, C ni, uh, uh, sorry, B if let's say you design, um, you nakkan beam yang kecil. Okay, compared to the one yang, okay, sebab um, kenapa kita nak beam besar, kenapa kita nak beam kecil? Sebab beam ni buruk. We try to cover the beam. We don't like it to 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 appear on top of us. Rasa macam sebab dia tak cantik eh so kita nak cover so sometimes uh, people try to engineer try to minimize the size of the beam so mungkin akan design something dia akan jadi macam design B lah okay A is a normal one okay kenapa <coughs> kau tak nak tukar alright and then we have next one the material properties okay Tadi, um, I ada explain pasal FY, betul? FY. So, FY ada hot roll and, sorry, ada mild steel and ada <laughs> high yield steel. So, you dah tahu okay. FY for mild steel 250 and you dah tahu FY for high yield steel 460. Okay. So maybe right now you nampak ada perkataan lagi baru, simbol baru which is FCU. Okay. So FCU ni is actually concrete strength. Okay. FY is steel strength. FCU is concrete strength. So um, kalau you masih ingat, I tak sure lah. You dulu ada buat part berapa eh? Part tu part one. Empat tu kau, kau sempat ke? <laughs> you buat pad footing tak? Sebelum ni? Ada buat? Bengkel ke? Ada buat lah. Okay. So bila you ada buat that pad footing ataupun you ada buat cube cube test. You ada buat cube. Concrete ada. cube. Ada kan? Ada. Yeah, okay. Ada miss. <laughs> Suara, ya ampun. <laughs> okay. That uh, test, um, cube test tu lah. Okay. So, dari situ lah kita tahu dia punya strength. Okay. Daripada cube yang you buat tu, dia hantar ke lab, dia check the compression strength dia berapa. So, itulah datangnya perkataan C30, C35, C40, C45, C50 ni. Okay. So, what does it mean by C? C tu grade dia lah. Okay. Kalau you tengok dekat sini, okay, so C30, strength dia 30 juga. Meaning that when we talk about, okay, what is the uh, the grade of concrete C30, what is the strength? So, automatically you know FCU dia adalah 30. Okay, so mak apa maksudnya? For 1 mm square, for example here you have 1 mm, 1 mm, this concrete boleh support as much as 30 newton untuk 1 mm square. Tu maksud dia, okay. <coughs> compressive strength eh, concrete memang compressive strength, dia bukan tensile strength eh, compressive maksudnya tekan daripada atas lah. Okay, um, so this is the strength. Sama juga, if you have like 25, so it means that FCU is 25 also. Okay, and here also dalam this table, if you see, this is like simplified version of FY. Okay, FY for hot roll, mild steel 250, high yield steel 460. You boleh refer direct to this table lah, no need to read whatever kat belakang tu. Panjang sangat. Okay, next. We have, um, okay, pasal loading. Okay, first thing, bila kita kira 
Bila kita design, satu benda yang kita kena tahu adalah loading. First thing first, mesti loading yang kita akan calculate first. Okay, for building, you have three types of... Sorry, excuse me. You have the three types of loading, which are dead load, impose load, and also wind load. Okay. <coughs> so, dead load, benda, another thing yang you can ingat, ingat, simbol dia adalah GK. Okay. Impose load QK. Win load WK. Okay. Ini simbol dia. So, kita dah tahu dah. Kalau GK, we know that it is that load. Impose load QK, win load WK. Okay. However, normally bila kita design, kita jarang kira for win load. Normally, wind load ni, we only take into account when we designing for something yang macam high rise structure. Kita design skyscraper ke, kita design KLCC ke. So, we take into account lah. Okay, this wind load. If not, we just ignore. Or mungkin you uh, design dekat kawasan yang mungkin ada typhoon. Ataupun dekat tepi, area tepi laut, seaside punya structure. So, you need to consider wind load. If not, normally kita akan design using that load and impose load. Okay. So, I tak payah explain kan. That load, impose load, you dah tahu kan. What is that? Load? Is. What is impose load? Korang kan padai. Oh, ni si. Si juga. Apa hal lo? Dah macam dah gua. Eh, dah gua ni si si si. What is it? <laughs> What? No, no, no. I hear like there's like um, ada suara you all being very funny. Become very funny, sorry, you all. Okay, never mind. Okay, so first, tadi ada cakap kita kena kira that load dulu. Saya type je lah. Okay, merajuk lah pula dia. Okay. <laughs> Fakrul Adli, jangan merajuk. Alright, so uh, bila you kira design load, <laughs> bila you kira design load, okay, sebab tadi I dah cakap you kena kira load dulu. Okay. So to calculate design load, so here we have the formula which is characteristic load <laughs> times with partial safety factor loads. Okay, characteristic loads adalah FK ni lah. Okay. And partial safety ni is this symbol. Okay. Characteristic load ni perhaps it can be GK ataupun QK ataupun WK. Nak lagi GK that load, QK impose load, WK is wind load. Okay. Itu adalah FK eh. So, ini adalah FK. Contoh FK. And then you have the partial safety factor. So, which one you going to use? So, kat sini we have like 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3 combination load. So, as I said previously, uh, what we going to learn kita tak, usually kita jarang ambil win. Okay, because we need on certain-certain situation, certain-certain area saja yang kita akan ambil kira win load. Normally, we only have like that and impose load. So, we're going to take the first one. Okay. <coughs> Using this table, so, uh, kita akan assume uh, in a very adverse situation lah. Maksudnya situation yang paling-paling tinggi eh. 1.4 and 1.6. Alright. WK, kita tak kira lah. Okay, tak ada. Sebab kita tak ambil. Uh, as I said sebelum ni, kita ambil the first one. So, the first one tak ada win eh. Because kita tak belajar design yang up until level nak design uh, menara. Sampai design uh, nak nak design Burj Dubai tu ke tak eh. Kita design rendah-rendah uh, je lah. So, kita just ambil kisah that and impose load. So, that will be 1.4 and impose load going to be one point. 6. So, you plus these two together. Okay. Dapatlah satu formula which is this one. Okay. 
JK is that load, impose load is QK. So W is ultimate design load. Tak payahlah belajar, tak, tak payahlah hafal sangat ultimate design load. You ambil je ultimate load. Ultimate load tu kita dah faham dah. It is W. Okay. Kita kira loading. So loading done. Okay. So when you dah calculate loading, you know that from loading ataupun forces, it will produce moment. Akan ada moment. Okay. Macam mana pun. Okay. Unless uh, the connection tu adalah pin atau roller tak adalah. Tapi if we talk about reinforced concrete, reinforced concrete mana pakai pin on roller. Dia adalah fixed, fixed connection. So dia akan ada moment. Okay. I believe that before mungkin I pernah lukis. Eh no, I pernah ajar this formula. I rasa lah. Hopefully yes. Okay. How I dapat formula ni. So sebenarnya if you still remember. Okay, this is your beam. And UDL. Okay, macam mana pun beam. Mesti akan support UDL eh. Kenapa UDL uniformly distributed load. Contohnya ini adalah beam. Okay. Ini you punya slab. Slab you akan duduk atas beam. Okay. The load daripada slab you akan transfer to beam. Uniformly. Okay. That's why dia jadi UDL. Alright. Unless it, dalam cerita lain mungkin kalau katakan tiba-tiba uh, in a, another design mungkin ada column kat atas ni. Mungkin lain lah. Okay. Design dia akan jadi lain. Tapi sekarang normally dia macam ni lah. Sepanjang panjang beam ni and then you ada slab dia akan transfer uh, uniformly to your beam. Okay so jadi macam ni. Alright. <coughs> so you pun lukis lah dia punya SFD and BMD. You akan dapat something Allah. Eh good tangan aku. You akan dapat something like this. Okay. This is SFD. Okay. And you also going to draw for BMD. You akan dapat something like this. Okay. So benda macam ni. Some BMD ni. Value ni. Yang maximum ni adalah M. Okay. So sebenarnya bila you dapat total load, uh, sorry, ultimate design load tadi tu, itu adalah loading ini. Berapa loading kat sini. So you lukis SFD, lukis BMD, you, so you akan dapat dia punya ultimate design moment. You akan dapat moment dia lah maximum bending moment. Okay. So value ni adalah value maximum ni moment. Sama lah dengan you pakai this formula. Okay. So ini adalah formula dia. For This one. Untuk dapatkan ni. Kalau, kalau tak you, ke, you susah lah you kena lukis benda ni. Kita tak nak lukis. Kita nak cara mudah kita pakai formula. Alright. So you dah ada this one. You dah tahu. <coughs> so W here. W yang nampak kat sini W. Is ultimate design yang kat belakang ni. Eh. Ah, ni W ni. This W. Masukkan L tu adalah length. Ha, how, berapa length? Okay. L dia power of 2 divided by 8. So, you dapat value. Alright. And then uh, next, kita dah kira we already have the value of M. Okay. Next, we need to find MU. So, you know M ni tadi, I dah explain. M ni datang daripada loading dari, sorry, moment ni, M ni, moment ni datang daripada load. Betul? Kita kira, kita dah kira loading berapa, loading ni akan hasilkan moment. So, moment ni datang dari load. <coughs> okay, MU here, M juga tapi ada U. So, MU is design ultimate moment resistant. It is another thing lah. Okay, so M yang ni, ini datang dari loading. MU ni 
is actually how much that the beam can support how much moment that the beam can support okay you see here from the formula kalau tengok dia ada b b ni you tahu breadth d to effective depth okay so sebenarnya dia akan ikut berapa sebenarnya your beam punya size okay b this is b oi okay b this is astaghfirullahalazim ini b Okay, so D tu, okay, I, I bagilah contohnya. Mungkin ini adalah 300. Mungkin ini adalah 600. So, ini, size macam ni, B dengan D lah macam tu. And then, FCU dia punya strength of concrete. So, it have nothing to do with the loading. Okay, so, according to this formula, it is actually produced by the size of the beam. So, beam size macam ni boleh pro, boleh support moment banyak ni. Boleh resist support, uh, boleh resist moment banyak ni. Macam itulah contohnya eh. <coughs> Tapi sekarang ni moment yang dihasilkan oleh loading you berapa? So, contohnya you kira-kira you dapat moment yang produced by loading 200. Okay. 200 kilo newton meter. Okay, however here you dapat moment yang boleh resist by this size of beam. It is 3, oi besarnya 200. <laughs> 20. No. Besarlah betul lah kot. 180. Okay, tapi bila size macam ni dia boleh resist 200 ok so maksudnya ok lah kan MUU 200 size macam ni boleh support sebanyak 200 moment yang dihasilkan oleh loading 180 so maksudnya beam ni boleh lah support moment yang daripada loading itu maksud dia lah ok so that's why kita kena check M ni ok MU mesti lagi besar dari M ok Ataupun M, I tulis terbalik, M mesti smaller than M, U. Okay, we must make sure this. Okay, so that kalau you dapat M, U bigger or equal to M or M is less or equal to M, U, it means that you can design the beam as singly reinforcement. So. Singly reinforce concrete beam. Okay. Bila M less than MU means you design the as singly reinforce concrete beam. Okay. What does it mean by singly? You must say ingat yang tadi. Okay. Yang bawah ni ada tension bar saja. Ada dua ya. Ha? Huh? Alright, tension bar sahaja. Okay, this is singly. Mana singly? Ini singly. Ini namanya doubly. Okay, so bila M less than MU or MU bigger than M, maksudnya design as this one, singly. Okay, simple. Bawah ni je tension bar. Tak ada bar pun atas ni eh. So, ini bila M, U lebih besar pada M, maksudnya mom, uh, beam this size can support moment produced by the load. Okay, so maksudnya design as singly. However, kalau in any case, mungkin you dapat M, U is less than M. Meaning that moment cannot resist uh moment a uh, moment that pro mo moment that can ayo ayo ada moment that can be resist by the beam cannot support moment produced by the load ah macam tu lah kalau mu less than m eh 
Meaning, bila keadaan macam ni, you kena design dia as doubly tadi. Okay. Yang mana satu doubly, yang ni. Uh, okay, bawah ni tension bar. Atas ni ada compression bar. Okay. So, this is doubly type. So, apa-apa pun. Bila, uh, so sebab saya tadi saya dah mention syllabus awak, awak belajar sampai sini saja, sampai singly saja, takkan masuk sampai doubly. Okay, so you don't have to worry, soalan takkan jadi macam doubly lah. Dia mesti M, U bigger than M or M less than M, U. Okay. <sighs> Alright. So, um, lepas kita dah, okay, ini checking saja Yang kita kira MU ni, kita nak checking, kita must make sure M is lower than MU. Okay, or MU is bigger than M. Okay. After kita check, so it is okay. So, it means that we can proceed to design it as singly reinforced concrete beam. Kita boleh design dia macam tu. Okay. When we can design it like that, so kita proceed. Okay. We need to find the value of K and the value of Z. So what is K? K ni tak ada nama. It's just a coefficient. Okay. Memang tak ada nama. I cari nama dia pun I tak tahu apa. Okay. <laughs> the formula of K is M divided by FCU BD square. Alright. <coughs> so, tak boleh setemil ni. Okay. Um, you tengok sini ada formula hmm. Right So if I move M here K F C U B D square Sama tak? Dengan formula yang kat belakang Formula kat belakang M U equal to 0 0.156 F C U B D square Okay, so you nampak FCU BD square ni sama, betul? Tapi 0 0.156 dengan K ni lah lainnya, okay? Okay, so MU ni, dia adalah value maximum sebenarnya, maximum untuk jadi singly. Kalau terlebih daripada MU, dia takkan jadi singly, itulah maksud dia, okay? Dia adalah limit untuk singly. So MU adalah limit, okay? So limit dia adalah 0.156 ni, which is K prime. Kalau you ganti kat sini SK prime dia akan jadi 0.156 juga. Okay. Faham kah? Do you guys understand or not? Kurang. This is ah? Tidak? Tak sangat. Tak sangat? Part mana you tak faham? Part apa tu? Saya pun tak tahu macam cakap part tu. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sebenarnya tak penting pun But I just want to tell you sebenarnya benda ni I just I, I just want to tell you that Sebenarnya formula ini Dengan formula, yang ni formula kat belakang eh Formula ini, formula yang you guna untuk checking saja. You checking whether dia singly or doubly Kalau dia okay. lebih, bigger, dia adalah doubly Bila dia less, okay. dia adalah singly Itu saja. Bila you dah checking, you dah tahu, okay, dia adalah singly. Contohnya, you dapat M lower than MU. Alright, you boleh proceed. So, you proceed, you start kena kira K. Bila oh, you kira K, okay, you tengok formula ni, formula yang you checking tadi dengan current formula ni sama je. Hampir sama. Kenapa dia sama? Ha, misteri. <tuh> tak, tak, bukan sebab tu. Sebenarnya, ini adalah... Sekarang kat sini kita tengah cari K Kita cari K kat sini Kenapa kita nak cari K ni? Sebab kita nak kira Z okay. Tapi K ni um, Dia tak sama dengan 0.5 Sebab dia tak maksimum Sebab kita tengok kat sini tadi kita kira Kita memang tahu M less than MU Meaning kalau M sama dengan MU Maksud dia K kita adalah 0.156 <laughs> Tapi M kita tak sama dengan MU So bila dia less Maksudnya K kita pun lain lah That's why kita kena kira K 
Faham ke? Aku cari Okay, aku cari lah <laughs> Yes Betul, so, that's why kita boleh cari Dia bukan 0.156 Kalau MUM Sama dengan MU Yes, K awak akan jadi Sama dengan K prime Which is 0.156 Kalau dia tak okay. sama Tak sama lah awak kena cari Tu maksud dia Okay, miss ha. Okay, uh, and also we must make sure that K kita ni less than K prime. So sebenarnya kalau M awak, Ostafazim. Kalau M yang awak dapat tu less daripada MU, K awak akan automatic less daripada K prime. Memang akan jadi macam ni. Sebab benda tu sama je. Okay, kalau M less than MU, K akan automatic jadi less than K prime. Alright, and then kita dah dapatkan coefficient so kita boleh masukkan dalam formula Z. Okay, formula Z ni, Z ni sebenarnya level arm. Okay, what is level arm? So, example here, we have a beam. So, beam here, top is compression. Bottom is tension. Okay. Level arm is a perpendicular distance between the line of action of the couple forming compressive and tensile force in the section. Kat mana sebenarnya compression? Kat mana tension? Okay. So you ada letak lagi bar. Kat mana kita patut letak bar? Bila you letak bar kat mana sebenarnya jarak between compression and tension tu? We don't know. So how we know that? Kita dapatkan value of Z. Alright, so dapatkan value of Z. So, you dah ada value of K. So, you just masukkan dia dalam formula. So, we're going to get something-something dalam D eh. D ni effective depth. Nanti I explain apa effective depth. Effective depth tu tak sama dengan depth. Tak sama. Dia tak sama dengan height. Effective depth tu adalah benda lain. Okay, you must make sure that dia must be less than 0.95D. Why mesti less than 0.95D? Nanti saya explain bila kita kira. Sebab sekarang ni susah nak cerita. Okay. Okay, di here dia explain kenapa K tu mesti less than K prime and so on lah. You boleh baca sendiri kenapa lah. Okay. Alright, here we have like bending ULS sebab sekarang sebenarnya masa dah nak habis 358 lah. Many ULS simply support rectangle beam are designed so that the concrete apa dia tulis tu? Above the natural axis is capable of resisting and induced compression and tensile reinforcement capable of resisting the induced stress is introduced below the neutral axis. So, uh, for example, without this type of beam, you know that the neutral axis is going to be at the center eh. Kalau you masih ingat dulu-dulu you belajar uh, stress diagram. Macam ni lah rupa dia. Stress strain diagram eh. Macam ni. Okay. This is what happen when simplified stress diagram at failure. So maksudnya when you reach the ultimate limit state. Maksudnya you dah exceed the limit. Okay. Dah fail. Ini yang akan jadi pada the, the, the distribution of stress dekat beam. You. Bawah ni memang langsung tak ada tak ada stensile stress yang dia boleh resist anymore. Eh? Dah zero. Okay so kita tak nak dia sampai jadi fail macam ni lah. Okay. So ini adalah stress diagram bila dia fail. Okay maksudnya you dah exceed the limit state yang supposedly you comply eh. And then, okay, ini adalah formula last untuk kelas ni. Next class ada lagi formula lain. Banyak gila formula. Sabar je lah korang. Okay, here uh, we have the formula of uh, area, steel area. Okay, after you dah kira Z, okay, you dah dapat value of Z, you akan dapat lah berapa-berapa value. Okay, next step dia, kita nak dapatkan berapa size steel okay using this formula so this is m design load ultimate design mo moment sorry ultimate design moment divided by 0 0.95 so fy again this is strength of bar ataupun strength of reinforcement 
ataupun steel strength sama je eh. 460 ataupun 250. If you use high tensile, it is 460. If you use smile steel, it is 250. And we also have Z, which is the one yang we calculated earlier. Letak je terus dalam this formula. So, you're going to get some value. So, I bagi contoh, I letak 1,270 mm square. This is example only lah. You dah kira-kira you dapat macam ni. Okay. <clears throat> Another thing that you should take note here, it also mentioned that you must allow some space between bar. Ni, space ni. You must allow some space eh. Okay, because for example, banyak betul aku punya for example hari ni. You, okay, ini you punya reinforcement, eh, ini you punya beam. So, reinforcement you kat bawah ni, dia melintang ke belakang. Okay, <coughs> ni cross section lah. Okay, so um, you punya formwork akan, uh, you akan letak formwork kat sini, formwork kat sini, formwork kat sini. And you going to start pouring the concrete from top. Alright. If let's say you don't have enough space between the bar. Okay, tak cukup space. Apa jadi? Bawah ni you still need to letak concrete juga sebab kat bawah ni ada gap eh. Ada gap kat bawah ni. So bila you pour concrete, concrete ni akan seep in through the void. Dia akan masuk through void ni, dia akan fill in dekat area bawah ni. Area semua-semua keliling-keliling ni lah. So macam mana kalau you letak bar terlampau rapat, macam mana concrete tu nak masuk? Okay, so that's why kita mesti consider juga untuk tak letak terlampau banyak bar ataupun untuk tak letak bar yang terlampau besar. Okay, so itu yang penting lah. Another thing that kita kena tahu, spacing ni, spacing between bar. Ni bar, ni you punya ni. Ah, ni, spacing ni. Kena cukup. Okay, kalau tak concrete tak boleh masuk. Nanti kat sini ada void. Bawah ni pula tak tak kena concrete. Okay, nanti you punya reinforcement akan expose to the environment. Nanti concrete uh, reinforcement you rosak lah. So, berkarat, patah dan fail. Okay. So, we don't want that to happen. Okay, tadi I bagi contoh. I bagi AS equal to 1270. Ni So, I bagi contoh hai kat sini. Allah. Adoi. 1270. Okay. This is my example. 1270mm square. Okay. This one. 1270. Adalah minimum uh, area. Maksudnya bila you select bar kat bawah ni. Okay. You kena select bigger Um, area daripada area 1270 ni for example I pick up 1470 boleh tak? boleh sebab dia lagi besar pada nombor ni kalau I ambil 1260 si boleh si boleh sebab dia smaller than this value so you cannot choose 1260 I can ambil 1570 I can go 1410 but I cannot go too high sampai I letak 3220 no okay because this one akan jadi over design membazir you letak bar terlampau banyak walaupun dia tak perlukan pun sebanyak ni okay so we go into number yang almost dekat-dekat lah tapi lebih besar So, uh, uh, I just ambil for my example. So, I ambil this one lah. 1470. This is my example eh. So, I pick this number 1470. So, you see here. Uh, this is number of bar. So, actually 3 number of bar. Yang bersaiz 25. Okay. It will produce the area of 1470. So, how am I going to write this thing? I pun tak tahu. <laughs> <clears throat> Here you see bar types are specified by letters. Okay, you have like mild steel and also high yield steel. Okay, 
So for miles still, we're going to use R. Okay, to refer, it is miles still. And for high yield, we're going to use Y. So bila you tahu why you dah tahu oh, it is a high yield bar, right? When you hear miles still, you know it is um, R. Macam itulah. Alright. So here, for example, my example, okay, I'm going to use high yield still. So I have to use Y. So macam mana I nak tulis? I'm using three number of bar, okay? Mm, high yield still, 25 mm diameter. Okay, this is how you to list. This is number of bar. This is high yield. And this is size. Okay. Size ni apa? Size ni sebenarnya ni. Kalau 25 mm, maksudnya diameter dia 25. Tu maksud dia. Okay. So, yeah. Look at that. Oi, memang aku tinggal. Tu maksud dia. Itu alasnya adalah diameter. Okay. <coughs> Kalau you pakai um, mile steel, uh, contohnya lah, I mau bagi tulis lah. Uh, 4R20. So, this is mile steel. Okay. Ikut numbering, eh, sorry numbering pula. Alphabet dekat belakang ni. R refer to mile steel. Y refer to High yield still. Uh, different country also ada yang pakai, I lupa lah negara apa, ada yang pakai high yield still, ada yang pakai H, ada yang pakai T, depends on country. But here in Malaysia, kita ikut British standard, British pakai Y. 